Greetings and welcome! In this episode of Whatever the Skunk This Is, we will be discussing one of the most important subjects in Guyana at the moment. When the skunt is elections. Now for those of you who only saw some of my videos roasting the PPP, or those of you who only saw my videos roasting the AP and UAFC and think that I am in support of either one of these political parties, let me make my position copiously clear. Both the PPP and the AP and UAFC could ball themselves up into one bundle and carry this skunt. Guyanese are tired of racial politics and these two power hungry parties are holding us back from real progress with their political tournaments. Now this video is going to be a bit longer than usual and I will show you a way I believe we can escape this political gridlock. So if you know your attention span is short, please get your skunt from here one time. Before we get started, I want to thank the people who make up this community. The good, the bad and the ugly. We may not always agree on certain matters, but you stick around and you voice your concerns in the comments. We are now 80,000 strong. If you just happened upon this video and you would like to join us, all you have to do is press that red and white subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you can receive updates when we upload new videos. Now let's get right into it. Let's go back to November 2014 when the former PPP president Ramatar prorogued parliament. We have to start here because this is when the constitutional maneuvering started. Consistent with my earlier position and in accordance with the powers conferred on me by Article 71 of the Constitution of the Republic of Guyana, I earlier today issued a proclamation proroguing the 10th Parliament. See, the joint opposition APNU and AFC outnumbered the PPP in Parliament and they formed an alliance in an effort to pass a no-confidence motion against the PPP government. Knowing fully well they would have been defeated because they did not have the numbers to strike the motion down, Ramatar used the section of the constitution which states that he could prorogue parliament at any time. My decision to exercise this constitutional option was not taken lightly, but it was the sole recourse that was left to me to ensure that the life of the 10th parliament was preserved. Three months after the prorogation, Ramatar then dissolved parliament and elections were held in May 2015 within the constitutionally prescribed time frame of three months. It should be noted that the prorogation could have lasted up to six months, but Ramatar wanted to show off his big balls and decided to face the electorate and lost to the coalition who is now in power with a one seat majority in parliament. Let's fast forward to when the no confidence motion was brought against this government. Members of the opposition say today is a day of history. Well, history would have been made in 2014 if when I tabled the motion of no confidence, that side which was in the government, I, Moses Virasami Nagamutu, repeat after me. Moses Virasami Nagamutu, I, 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 the big I. The big guy. And when the motion was moved, they ran from the motion. They prorogued the National Assembly. They did not allot a day for its debate. They shut down the history. The parliament, history was created then. The first mistake they made was to underestimate Jagdio and the PPP crooks. Jagdio knew fully well he did not have the numbers to pass a no confidence motion against the government, and so did the government. There are 33 here, and we are hoping that what I've said would touch the conscience of one of these on the other side. But touch the conscience, because we know, we know it's hard. We know that it's hard for you to give up the huge perks you're getting. And that's why you're so nervous and shaky. Mr. Speaker, we hope that one of you would say and share the views that you've been sharing privately to us, saying that we are useless, we know that. They counted on that one seat majority and bragged and boasted that the debate was a waste of time. But Jack Dio had a secret weapon. Some say he had three, but I'll stick to the known and leave the unknown out of this. Yes. Mr. Lumumba. Aye. Mrs. Pauline Sukai. Yes. Dr. Anthony. Yes. Ms. Manichand. Yes. Mr. Nanlal. Yes. Mr. Ali. Yes. Mr. Shira. Yes. Mr. Rohi. Yes. Mr. Jagdeo. Yes.
Mr. Rutherford. No. Mr. Rajkumar. No. Mr. Seeperson. Yes. Mr. Figuera. <laughs> Government Member of Parliament Charn Das Pasad voted with the opposition and got them the one-seat majority to tip the scales in their favor. The motion was passed and the government now had a three-month deadline to hold fresh elections. On the night of the vote, the government conceded defeat and everyone went to sleep except for a fella by the name of Nigel Hughes. True successful politician. If I were in politics and if I were involved in decision-making processes of the party I once was a member of, I would take any motion by Mr. Jackson, particularly a motion of my confidence, exceedingly uh, seriously, uh, to the extent that I would check myself and every single other member of my party sitting in Parliament. Because there's no way Mr. Jackson is going to pick up a stone and tell me he can pelt me, and I can wait till I get knocked unconscious and say, oh my god, he had a stone. So, um, from the time this motion was brought, um, with the kind of slim majority that you have, I would certainly would have paid very, very keen attention to it. And I would immediately have become a little paranoid, I would like to say, about certainly whatever political entity I was, was involved in the decision making process. You stayed up all night and cooked up a formula. That formula injected confusion into the nation. The formula suggested that 33 could not be the majority of 6 to 5 in the context of a no-confidence vote. This, ladies and gentlemen, is when the government lost all my respect. They started to echo this formula far and wide. They went back to the speaker and the speaker upheld the passage of the no-confidence motion. Then they went to the high court which ruled that the motion was validly passed. They then went to the court of appeal which two judges out of three agreed with the new mathematics formula. So the case made it all the way to the Caribbean Court of Justice which ruled that the no-confidence motion was validly passed. While all this litigation was in process, GCOM was not preparing for early elections and was seemingly being directed by the president via the unilaterally appointed chairman he installed. So today, we are in uncharted territory and no one knows when the mother of all elections will be held. GCOM is saying that a fresh list of voters is needed before elections can be held and this list will not be ready before the completion of house-to-house -house registration. This is echoing the government's sentiment. It is now clear that the Guyanese people need certainty about the future and the way forward. I want to outline a clear path. It is essential that we hold fair, free and credible elections. We cannot proceed on the current list of voters. It is outdated and corrupted. It may hold as many as 200,000 incorrect entries. What is more, those who have reached the age of 18 years since the last election are not in it. The Constitution entitles all citizens over the age of 18 the right to vote. It is a democratic imperative that house-to-house -house registration be completed swiftly so we can have an election at the earliest opportunity. Now I want to point out that GCOM is made up of six commissioners and headed by a chairman who has voting rights. The problem with this setup is that there are three government appointed commissioners and a government appointed chairman. And all the commissioners are loyal to their respective parties and not the Guyanese people. So with this formula, whichever party the chairman is aligned with, that is the party that essentially controls what happens at the commission. Interesting, right? Take a look at when Jack Dio had a chairman he was happy with. Now we said to GCOM, the law says that GCOM shall define or the form of verification that they list. Or maybe may decide on verification and will decide on what form it will take. Not the PPP, not the PNC, not any party. GCOM. That's a constitutional body independent just like the courts. The CCJ also ruled that the unilateral appointment of the GCOM chairman by the president was flawed and unconstitutional. He now stands resigned and a new chair has to be installed. The CCJ has not issued consequential orders as yet 
and is hoping that Granger and Jagio could grow the skunt up and come to a reasonable agreement on the way forward. But Granger's holding on and Jagdio just lurking. Now at the beginning of this video, I told you I believe I have a solution to this political mess that is plaguing Guyana. Elections will be held soon regardless of what these two agree or disagree on. And when you go to the polls people, do not vote for any of these two political parties. I will explain why. Any party that gets elected into government and also captures a majority of seats in parliament will be a dictatorship. Like the PPP was and like the APNU AFC is. What you should learn from the Charanda situation is that each parliamentarian who is supposed to be representing the interests of the people are not doing so. They are representing the interests of their party and must vote along party lines. What we need in parliament is a proportional distribution of seats with people who can vote their conscience. There should never be a situation where the result of a vote is known before the vote is taken. The only way we can fix this is if you give smaller political parties a seat at the table. This is also not without risk. We have been fooled before by the AFC who paraded as independent, then merged with the PNC. There is no guarantee that other alliances like this will not happen. But it's our best chance at real democracy in Guyana. God help us all if the PPP gains a majority of seats in parliament or Granger and his bullies regain control of the house. You may have noticed I did not mention Air Friend Ali throughout this video. That's because he is irrelevant. There is a chance that he could be the next president, but we all know who will be really running things. I urge you people to take this little MAGA cartoon's advice and put your ex anywhere else besides the PPP or the APNU AFC. I don't give a scunt who becomes president. I am only concerned with who will be voting in parliament on my behalf. And you should be concerned with this as well. If you made it this far into this video, it means that this topic is close to your heart. Instead of cussing out in the comments, how about we have an intellectual discussion with real suggestions that can take our country forward. If you don't agree with me, it does not have to be a stinking fight. Let's hear and respect each other's ideas. I don't delete comments. Yo, my name is Mudwata. Boom out! Hey, something ever surprised you like when you see it, you got a war? Hold up.